staying authentic in performances is a constant pursuit for actors. There are several ways that actors use to maintain their authenticity. Let's dive into this. Authenticity in your acting. This is Casting Actors Cast. It's time for another episode of Casting Actors Cast. Insights for actors from a casting director. Here he is, your host, Jeffrey Dreisbach. Well, hello, and welcome to today's episode of Casting Actors Cast. I'm Jeffrey Dreisbach, and I'm delighted that you're here today. Thank you so much for tuning in. We've been doing these podcasts for quite a while now, and it is so much fun to present this information, this material to you, in the hope of bringing actors together, in the hope of helping you in your acting career. Your journey is unique to you, but boy, there's things that we can talk about. I've been a casting director with McCorkle Casting for 15 years now. Gosh, I can't even believe it, really. And I can tell you that what's happening in the industry now is really very, very exciting. All kinds of excellent material that's out there, uh, both film, television, as well as theater. I think it's taking theater a little bit of a I don't know, it's coming back slowly, but boy, oh boy, it's coming back. But it's taking a little longer than we were all hoping. But we continue to cast for the Guthrie, Barrington Stage Company, George Street Playhouse, many, many, many other theaters that we are currently working projects on. And we also are continuing to do our work with four feature films and a television series. So, you know, it's been really very, very successful. But I still seem to find the time, because I have the love of doing this, to be able to present these podcasts to you. First, this is that moment of the podcast where I just simply get to say thank you for tuning in. Now, there's a website you can check out that I invite you to do so. It's called castingactresscast, all one word, dot com, castingactresscast.com. There, you're going to find some additional information about the podcast. You're going to see all of the folks that are currently carrying the podcast. You're going to see all of the past episodes. We're at episode 306 (laughs) <laughs> yeah, baby. <laughs> we are at 306 episodes right now, and you can listen to every damn one of them if you want, um, because I think they're all kind of interesting. They're all different. They're all unique. And they all, in my opinion, my humble opinion, they all have a lot of really cool, good, positive things to say. All right. Um, also there, there's a place that you can let me know that you're out there by simply filling out the form that says dive into the talent pool. If you do that, you give me your name and your email address. I don't do anything with that other than an occasional announcement about an upcoming episode. So it's very rare that I take advantage of that. And I promise you, I'm not taking advantage of that. I'm just simply letting you know about an upcoming episode. So it's not like you're going to get spammed with a bunch of junk. I that's not my thing. Like I like to say, that's not my jam. So I don't jam your mailbox. See what I did just there? All right. Um, Also, this is my uh, announcement about the class that is uh, available for you right now on video. And it's Creative Coaching Partners. So you want to just Google Creative Coaching Partners. There's the link on the website, by the way in case you, you, you know, don't remember this. But on the website, Creative Coaching Partners, you click on that and it's going to take you to this really cool organization that's putting together top-notch information classes about areas of the business. For example, my class is called The Art of the Audition. And it's a class that you can sign up for. There's all kinds of handout material. It's really been a lot of fun and a labor of love. It's taken some time to get it together. But I've been so excited about the prospect of being able to help many, many actors with their nervousness about auditions, to be able to understand the process. And with the handouts that I'm providing as well, I think you're going to find it really, really valuable. Also, here's my shout out to my good friends at Actors Connection, actorsconnection.com slash New York. They always seem to do amazing classes with working professionals in the industry. You know, there's nothing more you can say about that. If you're learning from people who are in the trenches every day doing it, wouldn't that kind of make a good opportunity for you to at least check out? I think so. All right. So listen, uh, we want to be able to talk about authenticity, but we really should define it first for actors. And it really comes down to believability. It really has to 
um, be a connection that you make with an actor whose rendition of the character that they're playing feels really truthful, feels very grounded and completely believable. See, acting is behaving. And if you're watching an actor and you are completely involved in their behavior, in what they're saying and how they're saying it, you know, that authentic connection is the authenticity that many, many actors strive for. So I've broken it down for you today into 12 areas of authenticity that actors use in their work. My hope is that you can incorporate this information into your work as well. Maybe you're doing a lot of these things already, or maybe you've maybe forgotten a couple of things, or maybe some of this might be new, and that might recharge your approach to the work. And of course, that would just make me more excited than you know, um, because I think those kind of little mini breakthroughs by just sharing this information can um, really affect all of us in such a positive way. So let's talk about the work and how to maintain authenticity. Number one, emotional preparation. So I know that actors often delve deep into the emotional lives of their characters. They also connect with the experiences, they connect with the feelings, and they connect with the motivations of the characters they portray, allowing genuine emotions to surface during performances. So that emotional connection is sort of the bedrock, actually, of the actor when they're putting together some ideas about how they're going to play the part. Number two, emotional connection. Sorry. <laughs> Number two, personal connection. Finding parallels between the character's experiences and the actor's own life helps the actor establish a personal connection. Now, listen, this connection fosters a more authentic portrayal as the emotions and the reactions are rooted in genuine understanding because the actor has had a similar experience. Now, this is not what I'm calling method acting. Um, that's something that is, to me, slightly different in that you're still using emotional recall. But instead of recalling it, you're having that experience right now. And that's the difference that I'm talking about. Let's move on from there. Character research. Thorough research into the character's background, the character's history, and the circumstances really provides actors with completely useful, tangible, valuable insights. Uh, this knowledge allows them to make informed choices and portrays characters with depth and with, there's that word, authenticity. Number four, physically and body language. So I meant to say number four. Number four, physicality and body language. Authenticity extends beyond dialogue. You know this, right? Actors pay attention to their physicality, their body language, their gesture, to convey the nuances of their characters in a realistic, truthful way. This helps create a very well-rounded and believable performance from the actor. So those of you who've had professional training in either conservatory or in university settings, you know that all of that body work that you did, that's why you did it. Being able to be connected to your whole instrument allows you to make interesting creative choices with the characters that you are playing. Number five, you know this is coming, right? Active listening. Engaging in active listening during scenes is absolutely crucial. Authentic reactions often arise from genuine responses to what other characters are saying or doing. Now, this is a dynamic, and this dynamic interaction co contributes to the realism of the performance. Number six, living in the moment. Being present in the moment is an absolute fundamental aspect of authentic acting. 
Actors really work hard. They strive to let go of preconceived notions and they immerse themselves fully in the scene, responding instinctively to the unfolding of circumstances, whether it is through the dialogue, their physicality, or whatever the situation the writer has provided them. You see, the actor interprets those writer's instincts, and that's what makes it such an interesting choice for the actor. Number seven, adapting to the scene. Authenticity comes when you have that ability to adapt to the circumstances or the situation you find themselves. They find themselves. Authenticity requires actors to adapt their performances to the tone, uh, to the atmosphere of each scene. Whether it's a lighthearted moment or a dramatic revelation, actors adjust their energy and their emotions accordingly. Moving on from there, and these are all things that help actors with their authenticity. Number eight, improvisational skills. Improvisation can add a layer of spontaneity to performances while adhering to the script. Actors may incorporate improvised moments that feel really authentic for the character. They, that actually creates a natural flow in the scene. So if the rehearsal environment is conducive to collaborating, finding moments of improvisation will contribute to the overall effect and dynamic of the work. All right, moving on from there, avoiding overacting. Mm -hmm. I see this a lot in my work as a teacher, that actors, they feel like they need to push themselves into another reality. And so it's important that actors become authentic. And one of the ways they do that is they decide that they're not going to overact. And it's about, and I know that's hard sometimes because many times actors aren't aware that they're doing that. But it's really about striking the right balance. And striking the right balance is crucial. Authentic performances avoid melodrama or they simply avoid overacting. So the actor's work has to convey emotions realistically without exaggeration. That ensures that their characters resonate with the audience. Number 10. This is challenging, I think, but feedback and collaboration. Seeking feedback from directors, from fellow actors, and even the audience during a performance becomes an essential tool for the actor, as long as the actor is open and available for that feedback. So collaboration, that fosters an environment where authenticity can th thrive. Uh, constructive input helps actors refine their performances. Be careful, however. Everyone's opinion should not be incorporated in the same way. You have to evaluate that feedback you might be getting from a fellow actor as being maybe not quite as helpful or useful as that feedback from a director. So be very careful about that. It's not like you're an open book for everyone to critique. It really is about being very specific with your questions about your performance to help redefine or reshape some of those choices your character is making. That presents in an authentic way. Moving on from there, continuous self-reflection. Listen up. Authenticity, um, the best I can say it is an ongoing process. Um, actors engage in self-reflection. They do. They analyze their performance. They identify areas for improvement, although it's important to be careful with that. If you are always watching your performance so that you can evaluate it later, you're developing a third eye, and that is not authentic. That is not demonstrating authenticity. In fact, I have an issue with directors asking actors after a scene, for example, how did that feel for you? Well, if a director is asking you that question, your answer really needs to be, I have no idea. <laughs> because in truth, if you are completely immersed in what's happening in a given scene, you're not watching yourself and evaluating yourself while you're doing it. Be careful of that third eye impeding your ability to connect with your character. 
So that's something to be very, very careful. But this commitment to wanting to grow is what I'm talking about. That contributes to a more authentic and evolving acting style. And then finally, maintaining personal integrity. Authentic acting demands a sense of self, and that sense of self has to embrace integrity. And that means literally staying true to one's personal values, and that integrity can enhance authenticity. It's that simple. Actors bring a piece of themselves into their role, allowing their unique perspectives and their experiences to shine through their performances. By combining emotional depth, research, active engagement, and a commitment to continuous improvement, actors cultivate authenticity in their performances, creating a memorable and resonant character. So whatever character you might be playing, Think in terms of these 12 actionable pieces of information that you can bring to the work. It's such a fun thing when you make those kinds of connections and you feel rewarded by the moments that you're able to create. There is absolutely no better feeling in the world than that. So that's why I encourage you to try some of these on for size. Some may be useful, some may be not so much. But the whole idea is to approach the work and use your creativity in a structured way. Because is, in my opinion, it is only through a structured environment that you are giving yourself permission to flourish. I'm Jeffrey Dreisbach. I hope that this was helpful to you. I got kind of a goosebumps just then. <laughs> I hope you did too. Hey, maybe that was authentic. This is Casting Actors Cast. Thank you for joining Casting Actors Cast. I'm Megan Grace Martinez.